Hi guys. Hi. How's it going? How y'all doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today I am doing my palette roulette video in this series. I take a palette that is in my collection that might also be in your collection and I utilize it for a week. I come back to you. I talk to you about the thoughts, the experiences, and the concerns, the things. Man, you can tell I have not done one of these in a very, very long time. For those of you new here, <laughs> oh my god. The Palette Roulette series on my channel is a series in which I pick a palette in my collection that might also be in your collection. I come back, I utilize it for a week, I come back to you and I talk to you about my experiences with the palette, I share with you live swatches, photos of eye looks I was able to create with the palette, and then we pick another palette. For those of you new here, hi my name is Donna. I am a lover of all things high and colorful beauty and self-care and I also work in the beauty industry as a field leader for Ulta Beauty. I get a lot of education in my position. I like to bring you that education through things like reviews on my channel, but I just really like to talk about makeup. So that's why I'm here and I hope that you're here for it. Today we're doing a review of the Sydney Grace Mel Thompson Tiny Marvels palette. I'm super excited to have this palette in my collection and super excited to be talking about it today. So with that said, Let's roll right into this palette review. All right, <laughs> today we are reviewing the Tiny Marvels palette by Sydney Grace and in collaboration with Mel Thompson. This was a collaboration that launched roughly her 34th birthday. Her birthday is August 5th and I think this launched August 7th of 2020. This was launched approximately one year before her death because Miss Mel Thompson unfortunately left this world um, without her beauty last year in September, late September. So um, she had Ehlers-Danlos disease. I believe, I'm, I'm not trying to like, like think that I believe from everything that I've read on Mel Thompson that that is, you know, eventually what took her from this world was complications with that disease. Sydney Grace is a, a company that I really, really love. I have several, several things from Sydney Grace, most prevalently in my collection as single eyeshadows. And I just did a single eyeshadow palette roulette of sorts. I, I did single shadows for a month and then came back and talked to you about all the single shadows in my collection. 90% of what I own in my single shadows population are Sydney Grace single eyeshadows. So I love, love, love Sydney Grace eyeshadows, but I also have some of their cheek products. I have some of their lip products. I have some of their brushes. Like I just love Sydney Grace. They're a really great brand and it's a family owned and operated brand. They're just amazing as a brand and they come up with some really great color stories for their palettes and as far as I know like they have collaborated with Mel Thompson I think they've also collaborated with some Talia or Christine I think her name is they started off as something else I cannot feather something something feather rivers makeup company or something like that anyways I have been following along with Sydney Grace since I was introduced to them by Lauren May Beauty actually in one of their Christmas and July sales I first ordered from them I think four years ago was the first time I ever ordered from them so anyways <laughs> let's move into this this is the Sydney Grace X Mel Thompson collaboration called Tiny Marvels this does come in at five stars with 238 reviews on the Sydney Grace website and it does have five stars on camera ready but it only has six reviews there. This is a $52 eyeshadow palette. It does have 1.06 ounces of product or each pan in here has 0.07 ounces per pan. It's a cardboard package with a magnetic closure. The artwork on the front of this was done by Mel's friend and tattoo artist Pat Bennett out of Tennessee. He created this inspired by Mel Thompson. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Mel Thompson is, I would be shocked. She was 
a breath of fresh air in the beauty community here on YouTube and just a beautiful person. And when this palette was launched, it sold out so, so quickly. And then they restocked it multiple times. Every single time I tried to get my hands on it and I just couldn't, I could never get it. When Mel passed, they presented it up again as I believe now not any longer a limited edition item within their, you know, realm, but as maybe a permanent item because it is still for sale. I did pick this up in the Christmas for July event that happened this last July and I couldn't, I couldn't be happier to have it in my life. I never knew Mel personally, but I have watched almost every single one of her videos and she's just such a beautiful creative mind. And like I said, such a breath of fresh air in this community. And I'm happy to have a piece of her with me just because of the statement that she was here on the in the beauty community on YouTube. This palette has uh, 15 eyeshadows, nine of which are matte, six are shimmers, and it was inspired by Mel's love for bugs and the shades within her tattoos. I know that she said that, you know, one of the shades specifically, the green, was inspired by the praying mantis that she had on one side of her neck. As I said, there are 15 eyeshadows in here nine of which are matte and six of which are shimmer and each one of them is 0 0.07 ounces per pan or two grams each. It is cruelty free and vegan. The wear time on each one of these shadows was pretty consistent with like Sydney Grace eyeshadows. Uh, I did see a good seven hours out of each one of them. There was zero problems with applying them. They all blended pretty perfectly into one another. The only one that I had trouble with not playing well with others is this one here, Scarab, which was the only of the 15 eyeshadows that was not original to this palette. This is actually all, was actually already a shade within the Sydney Grace lineup called Red Chameleon. It wasn't one that I had. The rest of them, I didn't see any kind of like fading or voiding or skipping or moving. They're really, really pigmented upon first application. They blend out very, very nicely. They play well with others and they last a long time. There was no voiding, no anything. Like I even did not experience any fallout with any of the shadows in here up to and including the shimmers that are in this palette. They have a really nice consistency to them. None of them feel like really you know, grippy in the pan, even though some of them are those darker, more red tone colors that you would expect would feel a little bit more grippy in the pan, specifically from a cruelty free and vegan establishment because they use dyes, not bugs to make their palettes. You know, when I first opened this up, there was two shades in here that kind of felt a little bit overwhelming and I knew that those shades existed in this palette because like I've I watched I've watched Mel for five years so I was watching her when she launched this palette for them at the same time like just looking at it in person I was like oh those kind of don't go what am I going to use them for but I I will say that they actually were really really pretty beautiful to use as shades to blend out other shades but also beautiful eyelid shades and they are these two here these two like quasi pastel quasi not pastel shades and when I say that I say that because I don't feel like they're like white based pastels uh, white based pastels I don't really love they get a little bit chalky they feel a little bit chalky they exacerbate texture and I don't feel like these did that at all even up to and including I have a Sydney Grace eyeshadow that I just decluttered not that long ago actually I think in the last palette roulette video that I did that was a mint green but it was a really heavy white base mint green and I did not feel like it did anything for my eyelids and I felt like it did exacerbate texture. I feel like that one was very white based. This one I do not feel 
like it's a very white based eyeshadow as far as a pastel goes it's actually really really beautiful i blended this shade out with that green and it was so so pretty i did that shade that shade and that scarab shade i i would say that that scarab shade works well but up against this shade it did not work well it didn't want to marry together and even up against this shade it did not work well it didn't want to marry together so I don't think it's got anything to do with these mattes though because every other shimmer shade in this palette that I used worked fine up against those shades they married well and you, there it was seamless it looked good with that one, I there was a lot of voiding that occurred on the outer end of the uh, lid space where I was trying to get those two shadows to kind of overlap each other. I just couldn't. I just couldn't get it to work for me. I love that this palette has a nice mirror in it. I haven't pulled the sticky off of the mirror, so it's looks like a funhouse mirror right now but um this does not stand up on its own and I would venture to say that it would bend all the way back but I don't really necessarily want to break the spine of this palette right now to be honest I really enjoyed this shade or this palette and there's uh, one more look that I want to do with it I'm recording this Saturday but I'm going to work with this again tomorrow morning I really want to use this one I haven't used it yet in a larger capacity than like inner corner and this one and this one I really think that those would make a really beautiful eye look so I'm gonna put that together tomorrow morning and go from there but other than that like every single shade in this palette I have used I'm not a huge fan of the purple I'm really not but it is a better pastel purple than I have managed to deal with or uh, managed to use in my collection in the past. It's a little more deeper lavender and actually kind of oxidizes on my eyes a, a little bit, but oxidizes in the most perfect way in my humble opinion. So with that said, let's look at the shadows here. Oh, I wanted to also point out that this is the palette and this is the cartridge so the palette cover so they look the exact same uh, up front and back you don't have to hold on to both if you don't want to this does have an 18 month shelf life I will say that I feel like Sydney Grace eyeshadows last a lot longer than that 18 months only because I have like I said all those singles and most of those Sydney Grace singles are not new to me. Most of them I did purchase, you know, four years ago when I started venturing into Sydney Grace. And I have zero problems with any of those shadows anymore um, performing any differently than they performed four years ago. Also, with that said, powders, like, you could go off of the shelf life if you wanted to, but it's not 100% necessary. Now, if they were cream... That might be a different story, but these actually perform really, really nicely and they are consistent with how my Sydney Grace shadows that are four years old perform in my collection right now. So let's do some swatches of this palette. All the shadow names in here are named after bugs, little creatures. Um, again, Mel had a fascination with all the little creatures of the world, so... They are based off that. The first one here is Web, and this is a metallic white. And you guys can see just how bright and shiny and metallic white that is. I do feel like when it's paired with some of the pinker tones in the palette, it does kind of have a pinky shift to it. The next one is this one, which is called Tree Hopper. And this Tree Hopper shade is kind of like a neutral, like orangey brown, like almost a camel tone color and that's what you know Mel described it as back in the day as a uh, neutral camel. I do think it's got a little bit of an orangey appeal to it so if you're into that like warm eye it is in my eye look actually today it's that shade that I use to blend out the darker shade in the crease. The next shade is this one here which is called Fire Butts and it is one of my favorites in the palette. It is on the lid space in my eye today. It does look a lot more gold on my eye look I think than I have seen it look with some of the other colors in this palette but this is a metallic like light green gold shade 
Then we have walk and stick and walk and stick I would describe as a kind of camo green. Although it does look really kind of brown in the swatch, it is very much kind of a neutral toned camouflage green shade. And then we have Scarab and Scarab again is a shadow that has been in the Sydney Grace lineup. If you are familiar with Sydney Grace and you know Red Chameleon, this is it. It is kind of a dual chrome and I think that you guys can see that in the swatch. It does have a little bit of red green dual chrominess to it. Nice little flip. It is beautiful on an eye look and I'm happy to have it in my collection but that is the one shade in this palette that I really, really struggled to get to play well with the other shadows in the palette. Every other shadow in this palette played really well with each other and did just fine. Okay, second row, we have Flutter By, which is a beautiful matte, just peachy pink. Then we have BB, which is a metallic gold. And this guy is super super impactful in an eye look. Um, BB was named after her best friend, Kelsey Brianna J, who I think that's what they called each other, in addition to the fact that she likes bees. Then we have Mantis, I believe she said was her favorite shade in the palette. And it is a, like a deep pastel mint green matte. And this is a color that was used straight out of the mantis that she has tattooed on her on her neck and then we have meadowhawk which is a duochrome rosy gold metallic it also has a really beautiful flip to it and then we have love bug which is kind of a gray toned purple or maybe a deep mauve is actually my favorite shade in the palette to use um, besides Bugaboo, which is on the next row and really partnered well with this Love Bug shade. I just loved it so, so much. I felt like it was really complimentary to my skin tone and really pretty in an eye look. All right, last five shades I think I'm going to put here. We have Jewel B, which is a pastel lavender. This is actually a deeper pastel lavender than I have in my collection. It is a matte. I don't 100% love it in this palette except for with like Love Bug up here and Bugaboo that I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, then we have this shade here, which is called Marvel. It is the namesake of the palette, and it is a true rose gold leaning copper metallic. And then we have Death Moth, which is a, a neutral grayish brown. And I think when I first looked at the palette, I thought this shade and this shade looked too similar and really didn't need to be in the palette together. But in an eye look, you can definitely see the difference. And this one is quite a bit more brown than this one is. And I think that you can see that also in the swatch. It was actually a pretty perfect shade to deepen up the um, walk and stick shade. Uh, and then we have this one, which is Bugaboo, also one of my favorites to use in the palette. This one is a matte maroon shade. And then we have Spider, which is the deepest shade in the palette. And it is a matte charcoal brown. Those are the shades in this palette. And I think that you can see that it's actually pretty like almost everyday palette quality. Like there is a little bit of everything. For a color lover, there even is enough here that I feel like I'm not missing anything by using this palette and this palette only over the last week. Like I didn't, there was no lack of creativity running through my veins by using this palette on its own. I definitely think that this palette could be the palette for a person who wants to step into color, but is too scared 
because even, you know, the colorful shades, this one, it's, it's really light and you can use it to blend out some of the other purples in this palette. And it's just going to look really pretty in an eye look. Even this, you know, mint green is really easy to use also. I think that this is just a pretty great one and done kind of eyeshadow palette if you can get past the confusion of the color story. Um, I do think that if a newbie picks this up and doesn't necessarily know how to work around in an eye palette and bounce from, needs it to speak to them versus their created creativity making something of it, there's not like rhyme or reason to what's going on in this palette. Like I would think that you could mix these four together, or these four together, or even these four together and come up with a really beautiful eye look. But I think that the average consumer or somebody who is not like creative colorfully would look at this and just be overwhemmed by it. I know that Temtalia, when it first came out a couple years ago, did this post on it and kind of took like the colors and put them into quads of colors that you could use in an eye look together. Now I am bounced all over that palette, but some people can't do that. I will see if I can't get that linked down below for you guys. I do think that it was a smart, smart thing to do for people who wanted the palette who love Mel Thompson, but couldn't get past what the palette looked like at, at first glance, because at first glance for somebody who's not used to eyeshadow palette that they have to think about this could be overwhelming it could be what broke you know the straw that broke the camel's back or however that saying goes and whether they want to purchase it or not now $52 is not cheap for 15 eyeshadow pans but I will say it is indie so you're gonna spend more anyways because it's indie it does have a couple of duo chromes in it which I think is fantastic Sydney Grace quality is so so good like i i love sydney grace and at 52 dollars for the eyeshadow palette each one of those pans of eyeshadow is three dollars and 47 cents so think 350 per eyeshadow pan that's not bad these eyeshadow pans are two grams of eyeshadow per 0 0.07 ounces per pan and that's bigger than what you're going to get from a color pop eyeshadow or even the regular Sydney Grace singles that you're getting, I think are 0 0.05 ounces of product. So it's a bigger size pen and there's 15 pans of it. So I don't think it's a horrible price to pay. I also think that it's great quality. I know that it's great quality because it's Sydney Grace and I love Sydney Grace. I have tons of Sydney Grace. So it's not like I'm coming to you and saying, oh, it's great. And I have no history with this, with this brand. I know this brand very well. But also, who doesn't want a little piece of Mel in their collection? Like, Mel Thompson has always been someone that everybody in this space looked up to. So, uh, regardless of whether I loved or hated this palette, if I'm honest with you, which I always am, I would tell you whether I loved it or hated it, but it would stay in my collection always because... I want a little piece of YouTube history and Mel Thompson is YouTube history. Like I said, the only one in this palette that I really struggled with was this Scarab shade and it is a beautiful shade, but I had a lot of trouble with it marrying with other shadows within the same palette. So it just doesn't like to play well with others. And sometimes shadows are like that. You just have to know about it. When I use that shadow in the future it'll be as an all over the lid maybe blend it out in the crease where it's not going to be as apparent there's any kind of voiding because I have hooded eyes and then go from there or maybe it's the only shadow that I use I'm gonna go pull another palette I'll be right back so the palette that I'm going to try out for the coming week come back to you next week and talk about I went back and forth with in my mind on what I wanted to pick but I do think that I was so excited about this palette and I've heard really, really good things about it. And it is a palette that I purchased from a brand that I used to love that I don't really find myself purchasing from anymore because 
I just kind of got bored with them. So I'm really excited to try it. And if you've been around here for a while, you should know which one I'm talking about. But if not, I am going to try the Tarte Man Eater palette. This has been out for a minute. It's not necessarily brand, brand new, but it's also not old. It hasn't been out for years and years, right? That's just, I think, launched like last month. I bought it over my birthday month. And so I know it, it launched in September. So I'm really excited to try it out. I've heard that it Tarte changed their formula and I loved their previous formula, but it was a really boring form, not formula, I guess, but everything that they ever put out was really kind of the same. So we all just kind of got out of our rose colored glasses for Tarte, but I'm excited. I love the packaging on this palette. It is so pretty, but it's not like a magnetic clasp or anything like that. I do have some traveling to do next week. I always have traveling to do, so there's that. I might pack some of my single shadows into like a nine pan, you know, magnetic palette so that I have a little bit of difference amongst the ranks. This does look like it has quite a bit of mattes versus shimmers. Not really a 50-50 mix. I'm a little confused though because I thought that maybe these kind of pans, these ones with the like leopard print in them would be a different formula than the rest but it looks like like this is a I mean it looks, it appears that this is a matte and this is a matte but these ones are like shimmers. This one might be a satin or a matte. Maybe these three are satins. I don't know. I'm interested to try it. I'm interested to get it on my face. I am also, I think, just interested in the fact that it looks like a very fall-esque palette. And I really, really want to use um, Gemini 1 and 2 the following week for like Halloween week so I could get that really like grungy grungy look not that I can't use my makeup anytime I want to but I am also really excited to try this one out so let me know what you guys think do you have this palette or the Sydney Grace one that I just reviewed what do you guys think of the Tiny Marvels palette that Sydney Grace collaborated with Mel Thompson on and what do you guys think of this one if you do have it? Um, I'm really excited to use it. I hope that you guys are excited to come back and watch the video next time. I hope that you love the eye looks that I was able to create with the Sydney Grace palette. And with that said, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that you all are having an awesome day, week, month, whenever this happens to hit you. I also hope that you and yours are well, that you all are staying safe, that you all are healthy and loving each other, but loving each other from afar. And until next time, bye friends. Oh, I hate this hair length. It needs to be just a smidge bit longer. I love the color though. The color is so pretty. As it fades, it just looks so, so pretty. Look at that. Look at how gorgeous that is. I need an eyeshadow shade this color. Yes. Okay. <laughs>